Okay, this is the top dimension that we're going to want to wind our spirals to. And we're going to start at the widest portion of the spiral and start winding up. So we want to make sure that's going to be the right dimension. And this, uh, again, this is pretty easy to wind. Get that first ring. The first ring is the most important. You don't want to wind these too tight so that there's room for the, the gases to come up through. Let's check that. It's way too big. So we're going to wind it a little tighter. You can adjust them a little when you're done. Not much though. So you want to get it right to start with. Too big. You could mechanically wind this, but it's so easy to bend this copper that's not really necessary if you're patient. Hold it, spiral them in. We'll work to get this first one just perfect. Well, perfect enough so that as we go, we can use that. First spiral is a template as we keep winding up. I'm leaving a little bit of gap between them because when I push them down into a pancake they're going to close up. You can see that. You can wind this by hand to about a two to three inch circumference and then you've got to start to open it up and spiral it back out. Just using your hands you can kind of Get a nice circle going. It's possible to kink this tubing so you don't want to like go crazy on tight bends. Because if you kink it, you're kind of you're kind of done. You can do spirals in sections and weld them all together. I don't like to do that. I just think it's uh, it's more work than just taking your time and getting these spirals nice to begin with. It's a little tougher as you get in tight. It's not that hard. Okay. That's about as tight as I like to go. It's about a two and a half, almost three inch circumference. You can go a little tighter, it's really not necessary. So we've got plenty of coil. It just, it's, it's going to mean that we're just a little taller with our coils, which really doesn't matter. So there's the first spiral bank. And it's not that tricky to open it up and do this next one now, because we're just going to follow along. Just going to lay it down the same way. And then just start to open it up and spiral out. Now then you got to turn your stack here and make it easier. You 
want at least a quarter of an inch gap between each coil for the hot gases to go up. And because we're doing this by hand, they're not perfect, which actually is, is helpful because it'll create a little more turbulent flow of the hot gases on their way up. They're going to heat each, hit each coil and bounce around and really uh, bathe each of these coils in hot gases. Those gases are going to start at about 1,000 degrees, 1,200 degrees. By the time they're done at the top, they will be about 350 degrees. So all that heat's been absorbed by this coil. So we're on our way to getting the second spiral done. More spirals. You're going to want to lay your spirals down flat and just kind of work work with the whole big coil and just keep turning it. It's a little bit awkward, but it's not that bad. You may have a little left over, it really doesn't matter. You could cut it off where you want it. I'm just gonna wrap it so that it all stays nice and together. All right, that took me about a half hour. Might take you a little longer, but this is what you got. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six coils. And they're gonna lay together like pancakes. We want a little bit of air space. We don't want them super tight. So we're going to run some rod through and we'll wire them together. That's how that looks. Now that hole in the middle, the hot gases will just go ahead and escape up through there. So we're going to we're going to plug that one when we're, when we're all done. That's how that looks. So that's how it stands. You can see here the um, spiral is going to feed right into the lower helical coil. We'll get all that bent nicely together when we're done. As you can see the, you know, roughly the dimensions. It stands about 2 feet, maybe 28 inches high. And this all together probably took me maybe an hour to put this together. Probably took me longer to go to the hardware and get the parts. So it's not a big job. So here you see kind of a front end view. It's where we're going to load the wood. We'll put a damper on it when we're done if we like. And um, the rest is just plumbing and some brazing. So we'll show you that later. There's just a couple of pieces of the plumbing that are now set in place. You can see kind of where they go. There's our water inlet. It'll come up through the bottom. We've got a pressure gauge. Water comes up through this coil, bottom coil, comes into the spiral bank. And as it does, we're going to pick up our um, water level right there. If the water's low, it will open the solenoid. Let the water in. Once water reaches this halfway point, it'll shut off. Then up here, we've got a dump valve, place for the safety valve right here. And then this is going to be the outlet to the steam engine. This will have an adjustable spring in here to uh, adjust pressure. Uh, generally you're going to want to let the dump valve open at about 90 psi. Safety valve will be set at 125. And this copper tubing is good for about 600 psi. And I haven't had any problems with uh, wood type fires. I think if you were firing with liquid fuels with that kind of BTU content, you might have to go to stainless, but we're just concerned with a wood fire here. A little uh, one horsepower engine. So that's what we're doing. <laughs>